Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We're so glad you joined us. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Biaverde. Today, we're continuing our Broadway Balances America series once again, going behind the scenes of Broadway's best shows as they travel across our country. My favorite. Ever wonder how we choose our lives and how our lives choose us? Yes. What a great question. Well, today, we take a look inside If Then. That's Love the name. That title. If Then, an original new musical that follows two distinct parallel paths of the main character, Elizabeth. It explores how fate plays a role in our lives, a question we can all relate to. Can't wait to see this. Plus, managing a rare but chronic lung disease. We're going to go behind the mystery. The Balancing Act starts right now. Broadway Balances America brought to you by Broadway Across America, bringing the best of Broadway to a city near you. We are once again heading to Broadway and beyond as our Broadway Balances America series takes us behind the scenes of some of the most beloved Broadway musicals as they travel across the country and into your local theaters. The idea that a single moment can change the course of a person's destiny and the roads we travel in life, that's the premise behind If Then. Balancing Act correspondent Amber Milt recently sat down with the creative team behind this new contemporary musical to talk real life real people, and what it takes to introduce an original musical to audiences. That's right, ladies. It's an ambitious and fascinating story about the intersection of choice and chance and how we balance that and the life we live. I'm amazed you somehow found her. I'm amazed that she gave in. Brian, tell us a little bit about the basic storyline of If Then. Sure. If Then is the story of a, a woman in her late 30s. She's returning to New York City to sort of start over. And the show follows two different possible tracks that her life might take from her first day in New York. She makes one sort of seeming insignificant choice and her life veers off in two completely different directions. And so the show follows both of those directions over a period of some years. It took years for Yorkie, along with his collaborator, composer, Tom Kitt, and director Michael Greif, the Pulitzer Prize and Tony Award-winning team behind Next to Normal, to bring If Then to the stage, a very personal story for both. That's good. I came to New York to find my life, and I really did, both in finding Brian to write musicals with, and also I found my wife at, at Columbia. I wonder what would have happened to my life if I hadn't been there at that time. I certainly wasn't. Uh, it's gratifying and comforting and wonderful to have this, again, this group of collaborators that continue to challenge me and support me and, and help me to, to tell the stories that I want to tell. The show reflects the sensibilities of modern audiences with its contemporary approach and attitude. Because it's contemporary, because it uses language that people use, but not necessarily always makes it onto the stage, and because it's about the concerns of a certain character, but I also knew that the people who, for whom it resonated, it would resonate very strongly because it was very much about the way we live our lives today. New York City acts as a central character in this unique story about fate, random connection, and the sense of possibility which makes city life so interesting. You could turn one corner or the other, run into someone, meet someone, see something that changes your life. It seemed to us that cities were especially full of that kind of possibility, and especially New York City. The music is incredible, and it drives the emotion of the story and really creates that energy, that kinetic energy of a city. Since its Broadway debut last year, the show has garnered several Tony nominations, including one for Best Score, and it strikes a chord with the talented, award-winning actors who originated the roles. It was so awesome to get to see you rehearse and to hear you sing. What an incredible voice you have. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to play Kate? Kate is one of the best characters I've ever played. It's a lot of fun. She's, um, she's ambitious and optimistic and just loves life. She's that person that you have in your life that no matter what happens, they find a way to see the good in it. That's Kate. To me, the show is so much about the ripple effects of life. 
The tiniest little pebble can make huge changes in anyone's life, and I get to live out both of those situations. James Snyder originated the role of Josh on Broadway. Oh, here I go. It's a play about choices, but really about how we react to those choices. It, it's coincidence almost that, that I'm married to my wife and how I met her and all of that crazy thing. If then is about embracing wherever you're at now and appreciating those choices behind you, but realizing that in this moment, you have a choice to be your best self and your most authentic self and to take that forward. Now, all of us can relate to the heart of the show, which reminds us to love and accept the things we have in life, those chances of fate that become our own if-then moments. For me, it happened about six years ago. I was working on a story about the Philly fanatic, and the producer at the time said, hey, I know this crazy Phillies fan. Would you mind if he came into the edit room to see the piece before it goes to air? I said, sure, why not? This guy comes in, we get to talking, and wouldn't you know it, a few years later, that crazy Phillies fan became the man that I married. A quick if-then moment, um, yes, when I met my husband, who is no longer with us, but um, we both got our hair cut at the same barber, and had I not chosen that barber and gave him my black and white 8 by 10 to hang up in his salon, then my late husband would not have seen my picture and found me on the street later on and asked me, hey, is your picture hanging up in it? It's his hair salon. In 1994, um, I was a young actor living in New York. I was really struggling. I had had some minor success to that point, but it was, I was in a really low point. I'd gotten very close to some big jobs in that year that had I gotten those jobs, I wouldn't have been working at Starbucks, available to audition for this little workshop, this little musical that I'd never heard of called Rent. And then, of course, getting that job made all the difference in my life. If Then is intentionally thought-provoking. One of the things that Brian and Tom do so beautifully in their writing is they explore the complexities and the subtleties of our lives and they ask more questions than necessarily provide answers. They just ask us to think about our lives in ways that we might not. I hope that people will look at their own lives and think about where they are and feel empowered to keep making bold and decisive choices about the lives they want to live. I'm a pretty avid poker player. Poker is like so many great games, it's a metaphor for life, you know. It's about responding to whatever comes your way and you know, yes, of course you have to try to make the right choice or the best choice, but still, even when you do that, crazy things can happen. Anticipation is high as the first national tour launches. The expectations are, are, are really just hopes and dreams about getting to sit with, with different audiences in different cities and, and feel what they are getting out of the piece. Because I look forward to doing, to finding new moments on this, in these new cities with these great new audiences, so I'm excited about it. Would you like the chance to win a trip to see If Then when it comes to Tempe, Arizona in January? Just head to ifthenstories.com before November 8th and share your If Then story along with a photo or video. Your story just might be fated to be the winning one. The North American tour of If Then has just launched and is coming soon to a theater near you. Check out broadwaybalancesamerica.com or go to our website, thebalancingact.com, for all the show information, tour dates, and more. Betsy Nardi is battling a chronic lung disease which can start with something as simple as a cough, a persistent cough. That's just one of the common symptoms of NTM, lung disease, which we're discussing today on this Behind the Mystery segment. Our guests are Dr. Leah Landy, pulmonologist and a member of the medical staff at Lankanau Medical Center, part of Main Line Health, and also with us today, Betsy Nardi, who has NTM. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here. No, thanks for having us. Doctor, let me start with you. Exactly what is NTM lung disease? 
NTM stands for non-tuberculous mycobacteria, which is a type of bacteria that's found in water and soil. It's actually all around us. Hmm. And it can cause a chronic lung infection, which can result in damage to the airways leading to the lungs as well as to the lungs themselves. Uh, people often have this infection for several months or even years before they're diagnosed with it. Some people can have very mild infection and others can have quite severe infection that can result in progressive destruction to their lungs and respiratory impairment. Are certain people more susceptible to this? Yes, there are certain people more susceptible, Thank including you. people with uh, chronic lung disease, such as cystic fibrosis or bronchiectasis or COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. But then there's a group of people who actually don't have underlying uh, disease at all and actually are, were previously quite healthy uh, that can get this infection, more commonly women. And these people tend to share certain characteristics. They tend to be thin, sometimes postmenopausal. They tend to be more likely uh, white or Asian uh, in descent. Uh, and we don't understand why it is that these uh, people are more susceptible to the infection. The infection, as I said, is all around us. Uh, we know it's in household water. Uh, it's been found in plumbing systems within the home, uh, within uh, kitchen sink faucets, the biofilm that forms within the faucet. Really? It's been, yeah, it's been found in shower heads, hot water heaters, hot tubs, humidifiers. So it's around us all over. It's also uh, certain types are in soil. And only some people who are exposed to it are actually getting disease from it. And this we don't understand. And Betsy, let me bring you in. Obviously, you've been exposed to this. Tell me your story. My story started about 20 years ago. I had um, a series of spontaneous pneumothoraxes, or spontaneous lung collapses. These occurred over about seven years. But then I had a, a long period of time where I had no issues. A few years ago, I started to develop a cough. And it sort of came in and, and went. But Which it never happened to anybody. Sure. A cough. And, sure. And so you know, I wasn't really concerned. I, I started to see um, several different doctors. Um, we thought the cough might be from acid reflux or GERD. So they, they treated me with a, some different medications. It helped somewhat, but didn't eliminate the cough. Over a course of months, the cough got worse and went to see a lung doctor who decided I should have a CAT scan. And after he saw my CAT scan, saw all of the scarring in my lung and sort of didn't look so pretty in there, mm -hmm. um, we did a sputum culture. And he thought I might have tuberculosis, so he put me on tuberculosis medications and said there was a possibility that I could also have this other bacteria, this non-contagious bacteria. I ended up very, very sick before they sort of figured out what was going on. I ended up in the hospital. Um, I was intubated because I, I couldn't get any oxygen. And how did you do all this and then your t two six-year-old boys and you're not <laughs> feeling well? That must have been a pretty tough one. It was really tough. Um, Tell me about the boys. I have two wonderful boys, Max and Leo. They give me all my strength. Um, they're wonderful little boys. I have also a very supportive husband of 10 years. It's been a difficult two years, but luckily the medications, I've, I'm feeling much better now. Um, it's very hard the day to day. I'm on six different antibiotics and other medications. I'm working full time, thankfully. I don't have many side effects. I'm very blessed that way. A lot You're of people blessed. really suffer with the side effects. Um, and you have so a wonderful support at home. I do, and family and friends. I just without them, I would not be here today. And my doctors, of course, they've become my very good friends because I see them all the time. Doctor, it's very important to obviously create awareness here because, you know, misdiagnosed, undiagnosed. Are there other symptoms that people can look out for? Yes, the most common symptom is a chronic cough. But in addition, fatigue is very common. Recurrent respiratory infections, sometimes weight loss, Less commonly, but sometimes coughing up of blood or fevers or night sweats or shortness of breath. And to make this diagnosis, and this is a very important point, doctors have to think of it. They have to send a special type of sputum culture. It can't be a routine culture. It's special uh, culture looking for this infection. And then often you cannot see evidence of this infection on a regular chest x-ray. So they have to get a CAT scan of the chest in order to see the changes compatible with NTM infection. And it's important that this be done because the sooner this infection is recognized and diagnosed, the better, so people can undergo proper workup uh, and possibly treatment if it's indicated. And Betsy, any closing thoughts before we leave you? you you're such an inspiration. Your story is amazing. Your family is beautiful. For anyone out there that may be wondering, and they could be someone that is facing this. 
I guess I would just urge folks to really question their doctors, um, suggest that they do have a CAT scan, have mm -hmm. the cultures. I think that's just extremely important. Thank and you so much for your time. And God bless your children. They're beautiful. Thank you. Thank Love you. the hair. Love the hair. <laughs> Doctor, stay right there because we're going to talk more about this. We're going to take a quick break. But when we return, you're going to meet a man with a very personal connection to this rare disease and his passion, his huge passion to create awareness. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We've been discussing NTM, an infectious lung disease, with Dr. Leah Landy, a pulmonologist who is an expert in the field of NTM lung disease. And joining us now is Philip Leitman, co-founder and president of NTM Info and Research. Welcome to the show, Philip. Thank you. Philip, thank you so much for being here. I know you have a very special story regarding your wife. She had NTM. Can you tell me a little about her story? My wife had NTM and battled this disease for 18 years. But it was her inspiration and her urging that led us to create NTM Info and Research, which began as a website and now is an organization working with support groups, physicians, uh, thought leaders around the country to try to help patients find better solutions to this disease. How did you and Fern discover or suspect that she had this? How did it start? She had recurrent lung infections. She had night sweats, some coughing up blood all of the symptoms that Dr. Landy outlined before. And so finally somebody ordered the right test. It's not that difficult if you think about it and order the right test. And then we started down a very long course of 18 years of treatment. When I look back at it, I'm grateful for the time and the treatment because there were doctors that stepped up and were available to us 24 seven. And that extended Fern's life and gave her quality of life right up until the end. And that's why I think we are all here talking to you to try to get the message out that first, we need doctors and the community to think about it so that there can be a timely diagnosis. And second, while the treatments might be a little complicated, most of the time, physicians can adjust medicines to help the patient tolerate anything they need to take and have effective treatment so that they have a quality of life and can be with their children, their spouses, and continue on with life. So it's a message of hope. And I wanna see other people have that same opportunity. You know, there are some young children here today. They deserve to grow up knowing and having their mother with them and healthy enough to participate in their life. And doctor, this story is so important because awareness is so key, obviously. Proper treatment is so vital here. Early diagnosis can really make a difference. We know right now there's about 50,000 cases of NTM lung disease in the US. And one of the big problems is people are not aware that this infection exists. I would say almost as a rule when I make a diagnosis of NTM lung infection in my personal practice, and in my practice it's often Mycobacterium avium complex or MAC infection, uh, the patients have never heard of it. And uh, that's pretty much a rule. This is not something that the general public is really aware of. Philip, your wife has left such an amazing legacy in terms of her spirit and her mission to create awareness and a family as well. Could you share with us um, your family, children? I believe you have grandchildren. We have a son and a daughter, uh, daughter-in-law and two grandsons who were the light of Fern's life. Uh, they gave her the motivation to keep going and I recall the grandchildren being there at a very young age when we were doing therapy with Fern, and they were so excited to participate in helping keep their grandmother well, one of them said it was the best play date he'd ever had. Thank you so much for thank being you. here. I do appreciate it. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, thank, thank you. you for the awareness today. The biopharmaceutical company Insmed is conducting a clinical trial for adult patients with NTM lung infection. Patients must fulfill certain eligibility criteria. For more information, contact convertntmstudy.com. And for more information on NTM lung disease, visit ntminfo.org. And of course, our website, thebalancingact.com.
Thanks so much for starting your day with us. Remember to check out BroadwayBalancesAmerica.com to find out when, if then, is coming to your city. And remember, you could win a trip to Tempe, Arizona. This love, is so cool. Love that place, Tempe, Arizona, to see if then. All you have to do is share your if then story. Remember to hashtag if then stories and be way, way balance. balance. Lots more on our website as well, TheBalancingAct.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, remember, find your balance. So long, everybody.